Let's get it puffin', I'm looking away Go tell mother I'm cooking the game Flow like water bubbling up, what you want me to make? All right, welcome to this month's Heath Highlight. I am here with my very special guest and friend, Arjun, who's from All Western Mortgage. He's been doing this for 22 years. Now look, we know all about the typical banks, the Wells Fargo's, the First Republic, pfft, the Silicon Valley Bank, pfft, okay? <laughs> we know it all. Why are we here? Why are we talking? Because sometimes the conventional bank is not the right solution. And I wanted to talk to somebody that I know knows what it's like to operate in a different market and hear about how he sees it from the lending side and what we can all learn from that. Okay, so my first question. Which, by the way, that was a very hype intro. Like, we have to do this way more. I didn't even get get into all of your personal accomplishments. Well, the energy, it was just like, this is hype. Like, I'm ready to go. Mm. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Okay. So, tell me first, what type of, well, what are, you, what are you seeing in our market right now? I wanted to see it, hear it from your side. So, we've chatted about this at the gym, right? Yes. Which she left that part out, we're workout buddies sometimes. She's very intense though, so I don't go near her because she's in a zone. <laughs> she does not F around at the gym. But what I see right now is that there's massive opportunity. Like all of the doom and gloom that's being painted in the media that you see out there about higher rates and market's going to crash, bubble bursting. None of it's the case. Those who are seeing like with a clear lens and looking at this market with their eyes wide open are finding real opportunity because, as we've chatted about, there's less competition. You have less bidding wars. More people are spooked. So you're able to negotiate, which is a word people were not allowed to use a few years ago. Now it's come back into the regular real estate vocabulary. And they're getting better incentives. Maybe not hugely reduced prices, but maybe some incentives or things that were unthought of a few years ago. So I'm seeing a lot of buyers take advantage of this and the noise being a little softer and coming in and scooping up property. And loan product itself, unlike traditional market shifts or previous market shifts, loan products are not getting tight. You might be a little bit confused by that statement because you're reading that big banks are laying off all of their mortgage personnel because they were overstaffed. And this was due to COVID times and capacity issues. Now they don't need that staff. They don't need as many originators, underwriters, processors. But what's actually happening in the private mortgage banking or direct mortgage banking space is you're seeing all kinds of new creative products coming to market. That tells me that investors, that funds, that capital sees this market as a huge opportunity and they're very bullish on it. They also believe in the health of the US consumer. They know that people have better credit. They know that people are well qualified. They know that people are a little bit more secure in their jobs. Even though we're heading into some trickier economic times, there isn't going to be widespread job losses. So the market's a lot more stable. So they're bringing more creative products to the market so that people have access to capital so they can continue to buy real estate because let's be honest, we both know this, which is why we love the industry so much. This is a massive amount of the United States economy, like some 40% of the overall economic picture is tied either directly or indirectly to real estate. It's too big. So investors know this. They want to keep it very liquid. They want to keep it very fluid. So we're seeing a lot of cool products come out there. A lot of buyers taking advantage of opportunity and people just capitalizing on all the doom and gloom that, you know, others would like you to believe that the sky's falling when it's really not. So here's one thing, here's one thing I'm seeing and I'd love your yeah. perspective on this. To me, it's like a teeter totter, right? People mm-hmm. are like, Oh my God, I can't buy now. The interest rates are so high but what we're seeing is a falling in prices. So it's either you're gonna pay more in interest or you're gonna pay more for the house. Mm -hmm. If you're paying more for the house, you're also gonna pay more in property taxes. That's right. right. And here's the thing about mortgages, you can always refinance, right? right? Huge misconceptions that people, like people of our parents' generation, they kept a mortgage for 30 years. None of us will ever, none of us are going to say in these generations going forward that you'll go back to your childhood home. There was 10 childhood homes, you moved a lot, maybe not 10, but a few, right? So nobody keeps a property that long. Specifically, nobody keeps a mortgage longer than three to five years. So you're always refinancing, restructuring it, pulling out equity, paying down principal, maybe because you ran into a bunch of cash. Whatever it is, the debt is constantly changing. So this whole statement about what I'm gonna pay over the life of the loan or over these 30 years of this interest rate, it's all moot because none of it ever materializes. Nobody holds a rate long enough to ever realize that it was a good rate or a bad rate. A rate is nothing more than a placeholder because you won't be in it long enough. Well, here's an example. I bought my very first house in 2004 at 7.75% interest rate. That's what it was. 
That's what it costs to borrow money. Pretty close to where it is now. Refin exactly. Well, yeah. I mean, hopefully we're kind not of, quite there yet. Yeah. But um, refinance it, I think, three times in the life of the loan. Okay. Uh, finished off at 2.7%. Not bad. Sold the house for, bought the house for $430,000. Sold it for $1.2 million oh. 15 years later. Oh. Had a tenant in it. For 15 years, paying my mortgage, paying my principal and my interest and my property taxes. And if I had not bought that house because the interest rate was 7.75, I would not have been able to do a 1031 exchange and buy the house in Park City last year. So people love, they love fear. Mm -hmm. They want to live on fear. And to me, I'm very Warren Buffett in this type of environment where it's like, when other people are scared, this is the time to grab. Totally. That's and it. so my question to you is like, if people are not qualifying for these kind of standard loans, what type of loans are you seeing um, that you guys are able to offer right now that maybe people don't know about? Right. So the traditional way that people think they qualify for a mortgage is having work history, tax returns, W-2s, pay stubs. That's all traditional. And that's what you would walk into a bank for. And I can certainly help with that too. That's actually very easy to do. I just wouldn't know one of those deals if it slapped me in the face because I do the more challenging outside the box stuff, which is exactly to what you're speaking of. These are borrowers that are maybe self-employed. They own businesses. And those of you that own businesses that are on the other side of this know you don't show a lot of income because the tax code is set up for you not to have to show a lot of income because you can take advantage of deductions. And that's the whole premise and benefit of owning a business is that you can write down income but it hurts you at the time that you want to qualify for a mortgage. <laughs> it sucks. You're like, I don't show anything. You can qualify for a Sani hut. Like that's all you're going to get, right? A porta potty. That's a porta potty. That's a porta potty. <laughs> I call them Sani huts back in Nevada where I'm from. That was the main company. So it's, it's really tough. But qualifying using bank statements or qualifying using your assets or qualifying for an investment property using the rents of that property, which actually do matter, right? You know this because you deal with a lot of investors. The rents are what makes the property valuable in the first place when you're looking at it through that lens. So a lot of these type of creative products are what we serve the market with. And it's allowing so many more buyers to actually gain access to these properties after, instead of having to wait it out, get private money or hard money. This is a space that's called non-QM financing. You have traditional financing, and then you have on the opposite end of the spectrum, like hard money, which is like, consider it mafia money, right? Like someone's gonna <laughs> knock at your door to collect every month. It's like 18%. It's really, really <laughs> steep, it's expensive, and it's painful if you don't pay. Like, physically painful, literally. <laughs> the space that's in the middle is called non-QM financing, which stands for non-qualified mortgage. So that is stuff that's outside this box, but not quite as expensive or painful as this box. And that's a very, very fluid space. So we do most of our lending here because most buyers, let's be honest, especially in these shifty times, this is where they fit in. They've mm -hmm. got one factor that's outside the box and therefore they're not gonna be able to get something done at First Republic or Wells or somewhere else. We can help those people all day. That is something that we see every day and is very easy for us to do. So that's what I'm seeing, more creative stuff and outside the box thinking, but that's what's needed in this market because again, the majority of home buyers actually fit into that bucket and not this bucket. Yeah, and I think just to summarize, I think one of the things, one of the reasons we relate so well is professional athlete, former professional athlete. And you know what, when times get tough, these are the type of people you want to work with. You want to work with people that know grit. They know how to work different solutions that aren't handed to you on a silver platter because there are always solutions. Yep. Always. Always. Things can always be changed in the future, yep. but you can never come back and grab this opportunity. So thank you a million times for giving us a little window into what you do and how you can make things available to people that would not typically I appreciate See outside it. the box. I appreciate it very much. And Tyler doesn't know this, but she actually was a huge inspiration for my website because before we were friends, I found a website and she, as a former competitive athlete, and let's be honest, she could still kick ass if she decided to take to whatever sport it was. Too old. No way. She <laughs> had, she, her website was all about partnering with somebody who knows how to win. And it was intense, but it was like, this is exactly the kind of person I would want to be around. And I saw that, I never told you this, and it inspired my website and a lot of the angle. I'm like, that's the way I talk to people. Cause I'd never really met an agent that took that approach. It was always call me for your real estate needs or I know the neighborhood's best. You're like, no, I know how to kick ass. Let's kick ass together. I was like, that's my gal. So I wanted to just tell you that. <laughs>